We're now going to go ahead and look at the half angle formulas. You saw the formulas on an earlier slide. We're going to now go ahead and work with those. So here you're given that your cosecant of u is negative 5 over 3. You know cosecant's the reciprocal sign. So if I flip this side upside down, I would get sine. So I got to flip this side upside down, I get a negative 3 over 5. So I know the sine of u is negative 3 over 5. I also know I'm dealing with from negative 90 degrees to 0 degrees, which is in the fourth quadrant. So I need to draw myself a triangle again in the fourth quadrant. Coming out from the origin, making a right angle to the x-axis. Sine is opposite of negative 3 over a hypotenuse of 5, so I'll mark that. Use your Pythagorean theorem to be able to get the adjacent side. In this case, it's 4. It's positive 4 because we're going to the right. Now, another thing we need to look at is we know this. We were given that right up here. But since we are looking for sine of half u, cosine of half u, tangent of half u, and the sine and cosine of half u's all have a plus or minus in front. So we need to figure out what quadrant is half u in. So we got to figure that out. So what do you have to do to all three parts of this one here to be able to get a half u? Well, if you multiply the middle by a half to get your half u, you got to multiply your 0 by a half, which is 0. you got to multiply your negative 90 by a half, which is negative 45. Then you got to ask yourself, okay, negative 45 to 0, which is for half u, is in which quadrant? Well, 0 to negative 45 is also in the fourth quadrant. So we know half u is in the fourth quadrant. So we now need to go ahead and look at this. Sine of half u. Here's your formula, but you might wonder, why is it negative? Well, sine of half u is negative since half u is in the fourth quadrant. And you know in the fourth quadrant, sine is negative. So we'll plug stuff into our formula. Bottoms over 2, 1 minus. Then it says the cosine of your angle. Well, you go to your angle that you have drawn over here. Your cosine would be 4 over 5. So you plug that in, and then you simplify. 1 minus 4 fifths is 1 fifth. 1 fifth divided by 2 would be the square root of 1 tenth. Then you got to go ahead and apply the root to the top and a root to the bottom. You'd have 1 over root 10, then you'd want to rationalize it, and you get a negative root 10 over 10. We then want to go ahead and do the cosine of half u. Here's your formula for cosine of half u. Notice there's no plus or minus in front. Remember that it's going to be positive since the cosine in the fourth quadrant, because half u is in the fourth quadrant, is positive. So we're going to just plug stuff in. We're still going to have our 2 on the bottom. We're still going to go 1 and then plus and then it just says cosine of u. So we go over here, we go cosine which is 4 over 5 and plug that in. So now we have 1 plus 4 fifths. Remember 1 is 5 fifths. 5 fifths plus 4 fifths is 9 fifths. 9 fifths divided by 2 is 9 tenths. Inside your square root, apply the root to the bottom and the top. And you get square to the top is 3, square to the bottom. Rationalize it then. And you get plus, or yeah, positive 3 root 10 over 10. Now there is a formula for the tangent of half u. But remember, since we just figured out the sine of half u and cosine of half u, you could just go sine over cosine of your two answers. Your answer for the sine of half u was the negative root 10 over 10. 
The cosine of half u was the negative, or the 3 root 10 over 10. So now you have a fraction divided by a fraction, so multiply by the reciprocal of the bottom one, and you get a negative one-third. We want to evaluate the tangent of pi over 8. you got to ask yourself, okay, is pi over 8 double an angle I'm used to be working with, or is it half an angle you're used to be working with? Well, in this case, pi over 8 is really half of pi over 4. And by the way, that's not a 4, that's a half of pi over 4. So pi over 8 is really half of pi over 4. So it's really a half angle formula for our tangent, where your pi over 4 correlates to your u, your angle that you're dealing with. So we're going to go ahead and use our formula for our tangent of half u, of which there's a couple of them. I'm choosing to use the one that says 1 minus the cosine of u. Use your angle you're dealing with, pi over 4, over the sine of u, which would be sine of pi over 4. You know the cosine and sine both of pi over 4. So you can plug those in, and then it's just a matter of simplifying. So we could multiply the top and the bottom both by a 2. Take your 2, because that's your common denominator, times your 1, your 2 times your fraction, and your 2 times your fraction. And so then we get your 2 times your 1, or 2. 2 times your fraction here, the 2 drops out your denominator. Same idea in the bottom. Well, once again, we don't like to leave roots in the bottom, so we'll multiply the top and bottom by root 2 over root 2. So on the bottom, we get a 2. A root 2 times your 2. A root 2 times your root 2. Everything has a 2 in front of it, so you can take a 2 out of everything. You get a 2 out of that, leaves you with a root. Minus a 2 out of 2 is a 1 over a 2... Oh, take a 2 out of the 2 on the bottom, which is 1. Don't have to put it over 1. So we get that as an answer. So we need to find the zeros of this function. Zeros meaning your y value is 0, so plug in 0. And you might say, uh, what happened here? Well, typically when you have a double angle and you're trying to solve something, you only, you want to get rid of that double angle. And your double angle sine formula is this right here. Well, you'll notice now that you have something in front of your minus sign, something after your minus sign, you can pull out your common factor because there's a cosine before the minus sign and a cosine after the minus sign. And then you work with what's left. You now have two things multiplied together to give you zero. So either the first part, your cosine is zero, or the parentheses here is equal to zero. Then you want to go ahead and solve it. Here you have cosine equal to zero. That's solved. Over here, you'd want to go ahead and subtract one, divide by negative two, and you get your sine to be one half. You then want to ask yourself, okay, cosine of what angle is 0? Well, when is cosine equal to 0? At the top of the circle and bottom of the circle. We're only going to use these two here because our problem restricts us to one full revolution around your circle between 0 and 2 pi. On the second one, you want to ask yourself, when is the sine or the sine of what angle is 1 half? Well, when is sine equal to a half? That's at pi over 6, and at 5 pi over 6. So our answers, then, are the ones that we come up with here. Those are the four answers for our particular problem.